Amen. Well, he walks in humility. Yes. He walks in love. Yes. If he can't help you, he won't hurt you. Amen. He might let you hurt yourself, but he won't hurt you. Amen. 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 And I thank God for him in a special way because this week wasn't teed off of anybody, but it was teed off a situation that happened. And I was livid. Mm -hmm. I was. I'm telling you the truth. And after talking to him, he said, shh, just calm down. It's all right. But I'm saying, he said, just calm down. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Which I could have took it another way, but he said, calm down. We have that. And I saw that. Mm -hmm. Now, he could have did it openly, but he didn't. He did it behind the scenes. So I honor him. Amen. Amen. He's Amen. not Pastor Brian, but he Pastor Branch. And I thank God. Amen. A mighty man of God. He moved in his own way. Amen. Amen. And I can say, let go and let God have his way in you. Amen. And those that wasn't, he really started Tuesday night. But anyway, y'all going to get part of it. So let's let's praise the Lord. Amen. As you come and minister the word of God. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter. Still getting used to this electronic age. Um, I'm glad my brother's behind me. So if I mess up, you know. He's my rescue. Amen. But I've been taught old school, so I still have my word with me in front of me. So that when the electronics fail, his word will never fail. All right? All right. I realize that we have all been through some type of turmoil, some type of mess, something that has moved our heart, our body, our soul, and even our spirit. To cause us to fall down on our knees and pray and cry and pray and cry and pray and cry. And pray and cry. Yes. Something has happened to each one of us that has caused us to weep and to sorrow, yes. to feel hurt and discouragement. But I'm here today, do we all have it? John 11, we're going to begin at verse 33. Are you with me? Yes. I'm reading from the American Standard Bible and it reads thus. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? Then said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? 38 says, then Jesus, groaning again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Father, bless your word. Bless your people. Bless your children. Use this word today to free us from all the crying and all the weeping 
and to allow us to begin to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For, for your hearing, the, the title of today's message is After You Cry. Amen. Mary and Martha and Lazarus were three of the people mentioned in Scripture that Jesus truly loved. He truly felt something for them. In fact, it was Mary who anointed Jesus with oil and ointment uh -huh. and wiped them off with her hair. Later, she anointed him again, and she wiped the tears with her hair. That's love. Yeah, it is. Today, I, I just want to reveal to you all that even though life is troubling, even though our circumstances sometimes seems a bit much, that's not the end. And we have to, after we cry, to do something. In the text, Jesus took four days after he heard that his friend Lazarus was sick. He tarried four days because he was already in the midst of helping God's people. He was already healing people and delivering people from whatever ailment that they found themselves in. Jesus was in fact working yes, he was. while Lazarus was dying. So I want you today to stop your crying, mm. stop your weeping, and get up and begin to do something. Yes. Because the text lets me know that after we cry, there is work to do. Yes. Yes. There's something that you can do even after you have suffered the things that life puts you through. There's something you can do. And I, I want to prove that through the text. The text in verse 33 says, When Jesus therefore saw Mary weeping, saw Martha weeping, saw the Jews weeping, saw all the people who was acquainted with them weeping, he stayed there another three days trying to fix it with those who were outside of that family circle. Uh -huh. Three days. A whole lot can go on in three days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my father died a few months ago and I was in that mode of weeping. But God did not allow me to stay in that mode. You see, for uh, two to three weeks, I had to bear all the brunt of his death. I had to make sure mama was all right. Had to make sure the brothers and the sisters were all right. Had to make sure everybody was doing something because daddy was dead and gone. I couldn't call on him to come back and instruct me anymore. I couldn't rely on his hand to be walking along with me hand in hand. He was gone. So what would it have done to the family? if nobody was willing to step up. Right. Jesus is trying to tell us here that after we cry, there's work to do. After you get finish your weeping and your sorrowing, there is something for you to do. Get up off your crying bed and do something. Get up off of your weeping willow mattress and begin to proclaim something. God wants us to move. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I believe that he simply took three days for Mary and Martha to get it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad I like those two sisters because one sister had the message. While one sister ran to Jesus, the other sister stayed home carrying out what she needed to do. She prepared the meal, got the house ready for to receive the guest. While one sister, all she thought about was running to Jesus. That's still doing something. You all read the text when you go home. Both of those sisters was busy working 
even after Lazarus had died. Because the text said when Lazarus died, Mary and Martha both was working. One ran to Jesus. But don't, don't, don't just be like this sister. This, this sister, when she got to Jesus, she said, if my brother, if, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yeah. Don't make the mistake of saying, if Jesus, if God, if oh. the Lord would have been here. Oh, Church, he's with us always. Yes. He made that promise to us that if we seek him, we shall find him. He made the promise to us that if we ask him, he'll give it to us. Yes. He, in fact, he said he will never her brother was dead. Uh -huh. And that was taking on its own entity in her existence. Her brother who, who was there for her all the time. Her, her brother who made things happen with her. Her brother who looked after her. He was now dead. All she could think about was Jesus I had faith in you that you should have been here when my brother was still alive. You, I I heard that you tell folk, get up off of their lame beds and walk. I've seen you give sight to a blind man. Why weren't you here? I made sure that I heard about the stories that they, they were telling you. So if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Uh -huh. I'm so glad she did that. Because Jesus he didn't, he didn't get upset with her. He didn't, he didn't get mad with her. He simply used the faith that she had Amen. to take her back home. Yeah. Every now and then we get caught up in a rut. True. We feel helpless and hopeless like we can't do anything. And every now and then we don't even feel like God is close to us. It is in those times where you have to draw from yourself the spirit like we talked about in Sunday school that's already in you. Draw from the power of the Holy Ghost that will enable you to speak to any mountain, any situation. And that situation will be changed not because you are so good, but the thing that is living in each one of us is more powerful than anything of this world. Yet we get stuck. We can't think beyond our situation. We, we can't think beyond our trouble. Yeah. We can't think beyond that thing that seems to hold us in a certain place. But look, look at what Jesus did. Jesus said, come on. Come on, sister. Show me where you lay down. And y'all check out the text. They were just like I was at one time. But he is thinking now. I know he's dead now. I, I know I heard the Old Testament words say, three days you're going to lie in the ground. I've heard that, that testimony. I, I, I've read it with my own eyes. I, I've heard the preachers talk about it. The high priest, they're always talking about it on Sunday morning. Ah, but this wasn't Sunday morning. Yeah. So he said, show me where you lay him. And all she could think about now was, he stinks. She understood how our anatomy works. Yeah. In three days, your body has been come, started to decompose and yeah. your skin starts to decay and yeah. the meat yeah. that is in your body starts to rot and you yeah. start smelling. Yeah. So because she was thinking earthly, she didn't have any idea that God was already working it out. God. You stink. He, he stinks. You, you have the audacity to ask me where we lay him. I know he's stinking. Yeah, yeah. And some of us have stinking thinking. Yeah, oh, yeah. We think just like her. Yeah. The Lord's not going to bring me out. I deserve this trouble. I deserve to be in this place. I deserve to be right, right where I am. I, God didn't do it. I did it to myself. I didn't listen. 
I didn't understand. I didn't know what tomorrow was going to bring. So I went on and did it anyhow. That's thinking, thinking, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Look at Jesus, though. Jesus, show me where you lay him. I know I've been tarrying three days more. I know I've waited this time. And I hear your report. He's dead. But check the text out, y'all. Jesus oh, took God. all of that stuff in. Yeah, yeah. All that they were saying, the weeping and the willowing. He took it in. And he just said, he's not asleep. Mm. I mean, I'm sorry. He, he's not dead. He's just sleeping. Yes, yes. He, he isn't dead. He, he, he's sleeping. Yes. You know, he's resting right now. Be careful of what you decide to end in. Uh, it is not your end. My God. You heard pastor say time and time again, your circumstance don't dictate who God is. Yes. God is everything yes. to me. Yes. Yes. He might make me wait four days just to prove yes. who he is. Yes. And that's what he did yes. with Lazarus. He waited four days because maybe some of their faith wasn't working real good. Wow. Yes. Maybe some of their ideas wasn't coherent to what God was about to do. So maybe God said, I'll let them tarry a while. Maybe they'll come around to knowing that I am. Because in the third verse of this chapter, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Why couldn't they think about that on this time when their brother had died? They forgot all about it. He reminded them. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm confused. Uh huh. If God is resurrection and life, it just it puzzles me. Why would He need to be resurrection when He's life? My Lord. That that was puzzling to me. So so I asked the question to myself. I said, Terrence, why don't you talk about that? Why would He need to be resurrection and life. Well, here's what he told me. He said he needs to be resurrection because all the stuff that's been hindering us for too long needed to be dealt with. It's simply those things had to just die. All the stuff that keeps you bound has to die before he can move. You see, there's some people in your life. I know mama and daddy died, but there's some in our lives have to die away from us. They don't have to die off. Just die away from us. There are some things and some situations in our life that have to be cut off and moved out so that we can move up. There are some times in our life that we just have to forget about and move on. That's right. So he had to be a resurrection. He had to call these things into the resurrection of now. Mary and Martha and all those Jews, some of them didn't believe them. Come on now, come on. God had to deal with them. Now I'm going to not only resurrect Lazarus, but Mary and Martha, because of your faith, you're going to be resurrected. Those Jews who are around in the crowd, you're going to be resurrected because there's some things that you think about that's not live, and I have to resurrect you out of them. That, that's what he was doing. He was just simply saying, I am the rising hill. Glory to God. I am the one who can make something out of nothing. I am the one who can say poof and the things will be all right. I am he. Yes. That's resurrection. Yes. Come on. Let's talk about the life. You see, because I know we're in old life ministry church. And I know that we know that when he comes back, the Bible says we're going to meet him in the sky. But what about right now? He said he is the resurrection and the life. You all ought to start living your lives like you're living in a resurrected life right now. Not by and by when you die, go up in the sky. Right now. He's my life right now. He's my life right this moment. <clears throat> Let me prove it to you. You all know Job. Job lost his family. He lost his wealth. He was bed stricken. Yet 
the word said, Job said, I have never yes. seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging. That was David, I'm sorry. Job said, naked, I came into this world, and naked, I will leave this world. That's what Job said. And then Job says, it's all right. Everything that God gave, God takes away. Not you, God does it. Not you, God does it. That means all of the troubles, all of the troubles in my life, God takes away and gives me a new life. Everything that I fail to do, God takes it away and fixes it and makes it my stepping stool. So every now and then, my shoes get heavy. I'm still stepping because I'm stepping toward life. Every now and then when my burdens get too rough, I'm still stepping because I'm stepping toward a life. Every now and then when I get tired and when I get burdened down too heavy, I'm stepping toward life because he is the resurrection and the life. The problem is though, the devil like we talked about in Sunday school, the devil keeps <coughs> Excuse me. The devil keeps reminding me yes. of what I used to do. Y'all don't get stuck in the stuff you used to do. Just like the sister talking about he stinks now. That's what it used to be. Yes. Oh, he's stinking now. You pull him out of that grave, all he's going to do be is a dead, decayed body that stinks. I'm so glad Jesus said, yes. I am resurrection and life. Because the Bible, I love the fact that the Bible says Jesus called Lazarus by name. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad he knows my name. He's not, when he calls me, it's not going to be mistaken. I, even my son has my name. But when he calls me, I'm going to be the one to step out. Yes. Not Terrence Jr. It's going to be Terrence Sr. Oh, one of us. God knows your name yes. and he knows it intimately personal. Yes. So when he calls you out of your trouble, you be sure to drop those troubles just like Lazarus grave clothes. Yes. The Bible says, yes. that's, that's another point I want to make. We bring stuff through our triumph. We, I said, we bring stuff through our triumph. Oh, Lord, I'm so glad you saved me from that so-and-so. I'm so glad you helped me to get beyond such and so. I'm so glad you made, it for, you made a way for me to get away from that terrible stuff. Well, if, since God made the way, why don't you leave the stuff yes. where you left it? Yes, God. That's what he told Lazarus. He said, oh, those grave clothes, he said, said, loose him. You see, Lazarus came forth with some stuff that was old and dead. Yes. He came forth with, with some things that were still bound to his body. Yeah. I, yeah. Guess, I guess when we die, they're so ashamed of us that they have to cover our faces with a shroud. But Lazarus stepped forth with all that stuff on him. Jesus simply said, Lazarus, come forth. And after, y'all, it's amazing. After Look, y'all, glory to God. He stepped forward in the same stuff that they put him in when he went in there. He stepped forward, y'all, with that same stuff. Don't you ever allow your circumstance to hinder you from moving forward. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your sisters, your brothers, your boss, your best friend. I don't care. Who it is, don't allow them to keep you bound yes, God. and chained and stuff. Mm. Jesus said, Lazarus, mm. come forth. And he came forth with all the old earthly stuff. And Jesus looked at him again. Jesus knows some stuff that we don't know, y'all. Yes, he yes. knows that that stuff will still continue to bother us. He simply knew that Lazarus was still in the same condition yes. that he was when they put him in the grave. He was in the same 
condition. But look what Jesus did. Jesus looked at Lazarus. Oh, this was after he cried, y'all. This was after he had weep, y'all. This was after Mary and Martha was weeping. This was after the Jews who were around him were weeping. Jesus said, loose him. Yeah. That what that tells me is you got to be willing to yeah. do some stuff just yeah. to be free. Yeah. You got to be willing yeah. to make some changes in yeah. your life so that God can begin to bring your new life forward. Amen. You have to do some stuff. Amen. After you cry, do some yeah. stuff. Yeah. Lazarus didn't utter a word. He just listened to everything that the master said. The grave clothes listened to Lazarus. Yeah. The grave itself listened to Jesus. Everybody around was amazed and who Jesus was and what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad y'all that I wasn't there. Because I might have been in disbelief. I might have been too amazed to step forward into the ministry. But I'm so glad that Lazarus heard every, come on, they're weeping and winnowing all around him. They're crying and preparing for after funeral repast. That's what they were doing. But Lazarus only heard his master's voice. He stepped out of the grave only to his master's voice. Yes. Even the grave clothes obeyed Jesus. Yes. You mean to tell me things that don't have life have to obey Jesus? Yes. Amen. Yes, it does. I don't care what it is. God is still in control. Yes, Everything. God is in control. He simply said, loose him and let him go. Why, why, why did the stuff have to let him go? Because Lazarus had some more living to do. Yeah. Lazarus had to let his sisters know that their faith was helping them to be sustained in a new moment. Lazarus had to let those who doubted in the city that God is God know that God called him out of a desperate grave situation. Lazarus had to be around so that, that those who are in other cities can hear that he was raised from the dead. Yes, yes. Glory to God. Yes. So the clothes had to lose him. The grave had to lose him. Yes, yes. And listen. Listen. And I'm about to close. The third thing that I want to talk about is after Lazarus rose, they still had doubters. Amen. After the man who came, Jesus didn't have, hadn't even died yet. So Lazarus had to go around, and you know, you, you know, in this sense, I don't want to be like Lazarus. Because Lazarus had to die again. Mm. He had to go through the same thing yeah. again. Glory to God, when I go, let me go. Yeah. When you all see that casket down, you go ahead and weep for a moment. Because the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, night but joy night. comes in the morning. Well, at this point, joy was in the morning for Lazarus. He had some more living to do. Yes. And Jesus had some more teaching. Mm. You see, Jesus simply brought him back, mm -hmm. called him by name, mm -hmm. called him out of death, mm -hmm. gave him a, and it, you know what, it wasn't even a new life. Mm -hmm. It was more life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't new because Jesus hadn't died. He just simply granted him more life. And that's what we have to be careful of. Bro. We have to be careful of not keeping our Christianity to ourselves. Amen. They ought to share, share testimonies. Yes. Talk about where God has brought you from. Yes. Tell those who are doubting how God has moved on your behalf. Haven't you ever been around somebody that didn't like you and just began to bless you for no apparent reason? That's the reason God allowed you to live for. So that they can see his glory. So that they can begin to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. And you know what else? We don't have to know it all. All we have to do is have faith. Mary and Martha had faith. Now let me talk about that for a moment. Mary and Martha had enough faith 
to get the word to Jesus that their brother was sick. They had enough faith to know, even in her testimony, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So she had faith to believe that Jesus, if he were there, problem is with us, he's always with us, and we're still asking him to come. My, 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 my. We're still asking him to go to the hospitals. We're still asking him to visit us when we're sick. To go, Lord, lay hands on them. When he's already there. He's already in our presence, Lord. All we have to do is act on the little faith that we have. Because it's that little faith, look like the size of a mustard seed, that can move mountains. It's that little faith that we have, that little understanding of him, that we have that little comprehension of him being God. That is enough to move mountains, to change kingdoms, to tear down strongholds. It's that little faith that we have, it's enough. To raise dead folk yes. to live in situations. Yes. That's what Jesus did with Mary and Martha and all those Jews who were around them. That he just simply added to their faith virtue. Y'all with me? He added to their faith virtue. Well, preacher, what is virtue? Virtue is power. What is power? Power is in the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? It is that thing that is in each one of us. Everybody who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, they have power, faith, virtue, and authority to do the things in this world while you are living to make those who don't believe, believe. Amen. Amen. And then the text talks about, talked about Lazarus, how they plotted to kill him and Jesus. No, no, we, we can't just kill Jesus. We, we got to get Lazarus back. We can't allow them to look at him. He was dead. We can't allow them to go talk with him. He was dead. We thought just like the devil with Jesus on the cross. Well, I thought I had him in the grave. That's what they were saying about Larry. Can you all imagine if you began to do the work of ministry, healing folk, giving folk sight, feeding folk, clothing them, setting them free from their terrible situations? What will people say about God then? My God. My, my, my. my God. One of them said he must be God. Mm. He must be the one. Mm -hmm. He must. Did, did you see what he did with Lazarus? He called him out of the grave and Lazarus came forth and they plotted to kill him again. Mm. I could imagine Lazarus was intimate with Paul. I could imagine Lazarus said, that's all right, kill me twice. Yeah. That's all, that's twice blessings for me. Wow. I've already been dead once. Uh, that, I'm sure Lazarus was able to shout now, go ahead and kill me anyhow, because I already experienced death, so you can't hurt me. Yeah. Uh, he, he realized that even then, that his savior who called him out of the grave will one day go in the grave on his back. So go ahead and kill me again. You all tell that old devil when he shows up in your life, like pastor said, shoot your best shot. Yes. Because your best shot isn't good enough for an all-sufficient savior. Your best shot isn't good enough for a God who calls the mountain to listen to him. Your, the devil's best shot cannot hinder us from what God has in store for us. Not just why we, when we die, but right now. So church, I just simply stopped by this morning to tell you, after you cry, do something. After you're weeping and you're willowing, start to move. That, that's when you have the most power. That, that's when your faith has exceeded your life. Do something after you cry. Because cry, the devil don't care how much you cry, how much you hurt, how much pain you're going through, how much suffering you're suffering. The devil doesn't care. 
He wants to destroy you. But God cares. God cares. And I mean, I just, I, I can't believe what I'm saying. God the Father said even before you and I were yet born, before we were even thought of, he said, this world that I created is so corrupt, so sinful. This place that I put my stamp of approval on and said that it was very good have gone straight to the left. Is that I should kill the world? Just kill everything. But I'm so glad Jesus was there. And Jesus said, Father, no, 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 no. He said, I'll go down. I'll make myself a body and I'll go live in that body. And Father, for 33 years, I'm going to walk, for 30 years, I'm going to walk with them. For 30 years, I'm going to allow them to touch me and to feel me because Hebrews says he's not a God that he can't be touched, that he can't be reached. He's not a God that he can't be approached. He is. Jesus said, I'll be that God for them. Father, for 30 years, allow me to live with them, to do the things that they do, to see the things that, and experience the stuff that they experience. He said, but Father, for three years, just allow me to teach them. For three years, let me show them just a little bit of your authority in this world. Let me help show them how they could witness your glorious majesty on earth. So for 30 years, he lived with them, giving them bits and pieces of what kingdom living is all about. Mm. Then for three years, he pulled a few aside and said, I'm going to teach you to teach them, and they will be men like I am. Y'all, don't you know that you are worthy of all the blessings of Christ our Savior? Don't you know you are worthy of all? authority that God had given Jesus in the body? Don't you know that you are worthy to do all that God has called and asked you to do just because Jesus decided to take on this body, live here for 33 years, and die for our sins? Yes. Yes. And for those who don't think that he was totally human, that day on the cross, he cried out. Did y'all hear me? He cried out to his father. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He cried out, Father, why have thou forsaken me? He cried out, y'all, feeling the pain and the turmoil of sin in this world. He cried out. But after he cried, mm. he said to the one on the right side, today, today, you're going to be with me. Today, you're going to be in paradise with me. And he still didn't stop there. He looked at his mother while he was on. I'm telling you, you got to do something after you cry. Don't just keep weeping. Do something. Yeah. He looked at his mother and saw his disciple, another one whom he loved, said, this is your mother. Mother, that's your son. Now, the disciple understood what a son's responsibility was to take care of mother. So mother was fine. Huh? Jesus was fine. The one who died on the cross with him, who said, remember me when you go into your father's kingdom. He was fine. But Jesus still didn't stop working then. Guess what he did, y'all? He thought about me. He said, Brother Branch is going to come along in around 1964, y'all, and I need to let him know that what I'm doing right now is for him. And he looked at Sister Fenwick and said, oh, around 2014, Sister Fenwick and Sister Martin gonna need some extra strength to take care of their loved ones. So I must do this for them. He looked at Sister Shireen and said, she's gonna need some extra strength to bring her family into a right relationship with God. And not only did he begin to bring 
and her family, look who's sitting beside her. You can't tell me that God ain't good. Look around the church, y'all. Look at yourself and realize that you are here this moment because of the grace of God. And you know what? Something else. His favor isn't faith. He's simply doing what he pleases. It gives him great pleasure to yeah. see you come out of your situation. So do something after you cry. Don't just cry, y'all. You know, I, I was looking in the dictionary about the, the difference in, between crying and weeping. Crying, the people cry out when they feel that something is wrong them. That something just didn't go right. Weeping is when you feel helpless. Weeping is when you feel that there's nothing more you can do. So I'm so glad that Jesus did some crying out and I'm ever blessed glad that he did some weeping. The text 1135 says when Jesus saw their faces and he saw their faith he wept because he realized that they had done all that they could do. So he began to work. What kind of craziness is that? Why should I weep for you? Why, why should I give up moaning for you? Why, why should I do it for you? Why should I take on your troubles? Why should I take on your... i tell you why. Simply, he loves you. He just loves you enough to take on all the stuff that the devil has traps yeah. waiting for you. Yeah. Jesus loved each one of us individually yeah. uh -huh. enough to take it on. So that's why pastor can say, hit me with your best shot. Because his best shot isn't good enough. I'm so glad today that the devil's best shot, all it does was is compels God to do more for me. Take your best shot. All it does is let the devil know who I belong to. Take your best shot. All it does is let the devil know that his power is useless in my life. Take your best shot, devil. I know that my Lord and Savior, he wept for me. And after he wept, he died. Glory to God. And on the third day, the text says, the Bible says, he got up. So he cried and he wept. Then he got up. And what do we always say, preachers, after he got up? We simply say, when he got up, he had all power in his hands. What kind of power is that? That's resurrection power. He's able to resurrect you from any obstacle that is in your life. That's resurrection power. Oh, when Lazarus got up, he had grave clothes on him. Jesus simply said, loose him. It's a resurrection power. And Lazarus got up. I'm so glad, y'all, that Jesus, when he got up, he did some more stuff. When he got up, he, he simply told Mary and the other two Marys that ran to the grave, don't touch me. I'm not finished yet. You see, I, even after Jesus died, he was still working. Y'all hear me? So even after you stop, stop your weeping. Do something. Get up and do something. Yeah. Or get up and proclaim something. Or get up and say something. Oh, don't let the world's circumstances hold you down. Get up after you cry. So go ahead and cry. Just get up after you cry. Do something. Proclaim God's glory while you're living. After you cry. Glory to God. Let us all stand. Amen.